Well, here I am at the end of the world, well, Land's End anyway. Just show you a quick sweep round, there's me trusty trailer. Had a bit of trouble with that this morning, but I think I've sorted that out. That's the Land's End Hotel. That's the nice seascape, sorry about the sun. Just going down now. So here we are, this is where it all starts, God help me. Okay, off we go. Nearly had a complete disaster then, just leaving uh, the Land's End bit. And I realised I hadn't got my rucksack on my back. I've got a little day sack that I'm carrying stuff in. Oh God. So anyway, I phoned the taxi company and it's in the back of the taxi. So he's going to bring it back to me. God bless him. Phew. The view here is really beautiful. Just look at this. As I sweep around, that's going back to the hotel. I don't know if you can make that out, but it, it's really gorgeous. And it's very, and there's a little bit of wind, but nothing much. A little bit of snow in places, but that's mostly gone now. So it's actually very nice here. Dave just came back and brought my rucksack for me, bless him. And he wouldn't take any money, so I'll put a donation into the charity for him. God bless him. I'd have been stuffed without that. Good morning. Here we are, just starting off from my B&B in Senon. It's about eight in the morning. Still quite a bit of snow by the side of the road. So it's fairly chilly, but it's dry and actually quite pleasant for walking. Hello again. Well, I've just stopped here for some lunch. Hello, it's me again. I've just stopped here in Penzance for some lunch. But let me just show you this. It's gorgeous. I don't suppose you can get a real feel for it just from a video, but it is really beautiful here and the sun's shining. I've just had a lovely chat with a chap called Peter who's, uh, who's going to do a donation online and uh, it's just really nice. It's been a slightly difficult morning. I've lost my glasses. I thought my phone had gone completely kaput but it seems to be okay now. Had a few heavy showers. Um, the road from Senon to here was a little bit tricky because it's quite windy and narrow so the traffic was a little bit heavy but I'm here safe and sound. So I'll enjoy my lunch now. Speak to you later. Bye. Just a reminder to myself, um, stop briefly at, uh, at, at the bay near Penzance and chatted to Jan and Ginny, who are really friendly and uh, I think they're going to put my picture online. Well, here we are. This is a little bit more like Cornwall Lanes. High hedges, twisty roads. And I've just uh, just met a lovely lady called Sue on her bike out for a ride this morning. Stopped and had a chat. She's going to put me on Facebook and link up with her friends. So another really nice thing happening today. Lovely. Weather's been not too bad. It's quite nice now, nice and sunny. Had a, well, it was pretty cold to start the day. I was really cold, but uh, okay now.
well I just had to video this this is just so funny my GPS has led me down this track look at it that's my trailer there I've stopped it because look at this am I supposed to swim madness yeah I'll have to go back so much for blooming technology bother well this is a proper Cornish Lane, really narrow, really steep, dogs barking behind me, I hope they don't nip my ankles, and actually a lovely sunny evening. So it's about six o'clock, I'm getting quite tired now, I'll be looking for somewhere to have something to eat for the evening and then find somewhere to bed down. Oh, this afternoon, for about an hour, I was on the A393, and oh my God, it was awful. Narrow, busy, there were lorries and buses behind me trying to get past. Quite scary at times. Anyway, here we are, nice and quiet. Well, this is an interesting one. How the heck am I going to get through this without getting soaked? Maybe I can get over on that bridge. Good morning. On day two of my, or my second full day of walking, I'm headed for a cute little place called Praise and Beeble. How about that for a name? Something really nice just happened. Uh, I saw a car go past me about 300 yards down the road, stopped and turned around, went back up the road past me, turned around and came back and stopped and had a chat. Apparently he used to work at the Land's End Centre about 10 years ago. It's called Andy and uh, he's going to sponsor me is brilliant. So it's quite busy on this stretch of road. Speak to you later. Well it's another lovely morning. I'm out of Truro now, walking along this gorgeous wooded lane. I can hear water flowing down in the valley, I don't suppose you can, but there's a, a river down there. So yesterday was a little bit traumatic, but we're out of that now and on the way again. Yay! Good morning, beginning of day five. I've just climbed a very steep hill out of St Neot, which is where I stayed last night. And uh, on my way to Launceston, I think it's about 16 miles or so. So I should be there later this afternoon. So yesterday, yesterday was tough. I started off from Nanpian, where I'd stayed the night before. Uh, I'd stopped on, I slept on someone's lawn and uh, in the morning it was a bit early, there was nobody up so I couldn't get any water. So I didn't have much, well I didn't have any breakfast really. A cup of tea and then on my way, uh, which is okay. Interesting that uh, I don't really feel hungry when I'm walking. So uh, anyway, I walked a few miles and a nice lady called Kate stopped her car and we had a chat. Uh, her husband did land to John and Groats on the bike last year and she's getting into some training. A few miles further on uh, there was a, a dog walker with a dog so I stopped just to give the dog a fuss. Lovely lurcher. Uh, walked on half a mile and there she was standing at her gate 
asking me if I wanted a cup of tea. Did I ever? So anyway, she invited me in, we had a nice cup of tea, I got my feet treated, I've got the beginnings of a, um, a blister on one toe, so I got some compede on that. And then off again, and after a fairly long morning, heavy rain, wind, got to Lanhydrock, stately home, had, uh, had some lunch there in the cafe, tried to dry out a bit. Oh, that's right, and um, sat next to me was uh, a couple uh, from Gloucester. Uh, Susan was one of them, and uh, she offered me a place to stay uh, when I get to Gloucester. I've got a couple of dogs racing at me. I hope they're friendly. Yep, there they go. Uh, right, so after I'd had my lunch at Lan Hydrox, still hissing down with rain. That was a, an H, by the way, not a P. Hissing with rain. So I carried on. My next stop, or my next point, was a place called Mount or Mount Pleasant, and it certainly was a mount, a huge hill to climb. The roads were just running with water. It was like walking up a river. Uh, okay, got to the top, just on the edge of Bodmin Moor, pretty wild. Luckily there was someone there to uh, point out the right direction for the next place, which is where I was heading. It was afternoon by now, St Neot. So I was getting pretty tired by now, early afternoon, or no, mid-afternoon, another few miles. It was gone four, and I was getting really tired. So I knocked on a door and said, please, can you give me a cup of tea? Which they did, bless them. It was uh, John Doran and his wife invited me in. We had a nice long chat. He's a funeral director, or their funeral directors. So that pepped up my spirits. I had another mile and a half to go to St Neot, where there was a nice pub. Uh, so I'm slightly ashamed to say I weakened and got a room for the night. I was just wet and tired and it's a village, St Neot's a village with very steep roads going in and out. It would have been really difficult to find somewhere to park my tent for the night. Anyway, I got a room which was wonderful. Got all my stuff up there, I exploded into the room, stuff everywhere, drying. Uh, got a meal, um, and then off to bed fairly early, slept reasonably well. Uh, woke a couple of times, but yeah, it's okay, feel better this morning. Uh, went down for breakfast, uh, had a nice long chat with another Kate, who's an Irish physiotherapist from London, she's from Dublin. We put the world straight pretty much, solved most of the problems. And uh, I'm off again. So heading for Launceston. Still raining, but not quite as bad as yesterday. Okay, so speak to you later. Bye. Well, I'm on Dark uh, uh, Bodmin Moor now, quite high up. Luckily, thankfully, the rain has stopped. It's a bit windy, but it's much easier walking without the rain. One of the things I'm finding interesting is these uh, mines or uh, big chimneys. I've seen loads of them around. I'm not sure what they're for. Obviously, I'm all derelict now. Hmm. Anyway, quite nice. I'm at a place on Dar uh, Bodmin Moor called the Minions and I'm having a cream tea, yum, and giving my feet a bit of TLC. Also making quite a mess. I don't think the owner was very impressed. Good evening. Do I look tired? I certainly feel tired. Um, I've arrived in Launceston at my mum's house. This is her house here. And she's in the kitchen preparing dinner for us. It's been a moderately tough day, very hilly, rainy this morning, but the afternoon weather has been quite nice. Lots of nice people stopping again, chatting, hooting, making donations. So it's been really good from that point of view. And um, I'm going to have a rest now. I'm definitely having a rest day tomorrow. 
and then start again on Monday with uh, three friends, three old school friends from Launceston joining me. So uh, speak to you soon. Bye. Good morning again. It's Monday morning. I've no idea what date it is. And uh, I've just had a nice cup of coffee and cake, of course, with my three friends, Joe, Steph, and Linda. They walked with me from Launceston to Lifton, which is about three miles. A little bit rainy, but otherwise quite a nice walk. I uh, called in briefly to see my friend Martin, whose partner very sadly had just recently died. Um, so I'm off again now. My next uh, destination is Oakhampton. So all going well. Weather's a little bit dull, but it's been a nice break. And uh, on my way again. Speak to you soon. Bye. Good morning, beginning of day seven of walking. I'm just coming into a campton now. Hopefully to get some coffee. And cake, of course. Um, so yesterday uh, was quite good. Um, I was hoping to get somewhere for lunch halfway. But unfortunately the pub was closed so I just snacked and kept going got to Oakhampton about five and spent the evening in the pub there had a nice meal slept quite well and some of the roads yesterday were pretty scary but mostly it was okay so uh, here we are nice morning yesterday was okay it didn't get an, uh, any rain except first thing in the morning um, and today looks like being quite nice. So I hope I'll find some Wi-Fi now and then I can get this off. Speak to you later. Bye. Hi everyone. Um, it's afternoon, about half past three. I think it's Tuesday. And um, I'm near Crediton in Devon. That little village over there is called Sanford, which is where I'm heading. And that's where my grandparents are buried. So I'll see if I can find their, uh, their gravestone. Well, good morning, Richard. Again, it's Wednesday morning and the usual thing happens. Okay, I hope everything's going absolutely brilliantly and we're missing you so much. I've got loads to tell you, but we're super, super proud of you. Okay, so we've just got a little bit of a surprise for you because we really want to promote you within your walking and everything. So I'm just gonna turn the screen round now, okay? Well, in a minute when I can actually turn the screen round. Okay. So, I'm just going to turn it around now. Okay. So, there's a little thing from our colleagues now, as we're just coming into the light room. Okay. Okay. And that's, and that's from all of us as nutters. Okay, speak to you soon, Richard. Take Bye. care. Bye. <laughs> Good morning. Here we go on day nine, I think. Getting a bit losing the track of time. Anyway, we're off. When I say we, I mean me and my trailer. I tend to think of it as a sort of weird being. Anyway, um, yeah, last night in, where was I? Uh, Sandford, a little village near Crediton. Yeah, it was quite pleasant. Pub was nice, nice meal. People weren't ever so friendly. Well, some were, some were very friendly, but some were quite standoffish and uh, it was all terribly middle class. Um, 
got my tent pitched in uh, uh, somebody's back garden. Had a good night's sleep, up just after six, and I'm off now just before seven, or oh, it's just after seven now. So it looks like it's going to be quite rainy today. In fact, forecast is for heavy rain later on in the afternoon. So just plod along. My right foot is still quite sore, but hopefully that'll settle as the day goes on. Anyway, I've got a big tractor coming towards me, so I'll speak to you later. Bye. I'm going to have to shout a bit because it's quite windy, but I just wanted to get this on. Um, I've just stopped in this little village called Poyle, or well, it looks like Puffhill, but anyway, they call it Poyle. And um, as I was walking through the village, there was a chap there walking his dog, and I said, is there anywhere I can get a cup of tea in the village? And he said, no, do you want to come in and have a cup? So I went in, um, Steve and Anne gave me tea and toast. We had a lovely long chat, and I feel really refreshed now. But my goodness, the wind has got up. Anyway, we're off now towards Tiverton. Thank you very much, Steve and Anne. That was, I, I really feel refreshed, brilliant. Hi everybody, I'm going to do a video update this evening because it's a lot quicker and um, I'm tired. It's been quite a tough day again, been raining almost all day. Uh, I had one quite funny incident where the road was completely flooded. Um, I managed to get across by clambering over a gate and dragging my trailer through the stream. Um, a couple of other times the road has been pretty flooded and my feet have got quite wet. So uh, I'm in a pub uh, in a little place called Staple Cross. And I'm just waiting for a meal. I've got my tent put up in the rain, which was interesting, uh, but I hope it's going to be okay. Um, what else? Yes, I've had a couple of really nice um, things happen today. Um, two people in separate locations invited me in for tea and food and that was really good, got, got a bit warm. Uh, what else? I don't know, I've been on really narrow lanes all day, really narrow. And sometimes I couldn't actually get past a car or the car couldn't pass me. So uh, in one place a van had to back up about 200 yards so I could get past him. So the lanes have been really narrow. The advantage is there's very little traffic. I maybe see a couple of cars an hour, uh, but the disadvantage is that it can be tricky like that. It's also very mucky and muddy. Thank you. Thanks. That's my dinner arriving. And um, what was I saying? Yes, the advantage is that it's quite... Yeah, the disadvantage is that um, places to stop are few and far between. But at least I don't have all that heavy traffic zooming past me. Right, I'm going to have me supper. I'll maybe do another update later if I think of other things to say. Hello again. Well, day 10. Um, I'm a bit late doing this today. This morning has been quite difficult psychologically for me, but uh, I'm okay now. Um, weather's not been too bad. A little bit wet to start with. I had quite a decent night in spite of the rain. It was windy and raining heavily during the night, but the tent's good. I was warm and cosy. Um, just a bit chilly getting up, but uh, otherwise fine. Um, I'm finding in general, I mean, with a few exceptions, I'm uh, finding in general people are a bit less friendly here in, in Devon, and now I'm in Somerset apparently. Um, but there have been some lovely exceptions. Uh, a couple of people yesterday took me in and gave me tea and something to eat. A lady called Kate, and also a couple called Steve and Anne. Um, and then today a really good thing's happened because I've been a bit worried about one of my wheels. The, uh, the trailer tipped over yesterday and bent one of the wheel arches and it's okay but it's been looking a little bit wobbly. So I came into a village called Hals and uh, 
I was getting a bit thirsty and short of water so I knocked on a door and asked for some water and I was just chatting to the lady and another gentleman came by to talk to her and uh, we got chatting and I was saying I was looking for someone to get some coffee and he said well I'll make you a coffee so I so we went round to his house, uh, made me a cup of tea actually, and got chatting and uh, he noticed that my trailer was a bit bent. So he said, well, let's see if we can fix it. So we went round uh, to his workshop and we put a temporary fix on it. So it feels much better now. So uh, I'm on my way again, not sure where I'm going. Never mind, I'll get somewhere. I forgot to say, the gentleman who helped me fix my trailer is called Derek. And also I forgot to mention, went into a, a little village, or oh, a few miles back now, and um, I was looking for somewhere to have some coffee and cake, of course, and I was told that the village shop did drinks. So I went into the village shop, the chap in there was really grumpy. I said, could I have a coffee? And he said, no, machine's broken. Uh, so then I said, would you mind filling up my water bottle for me? And he said, oh, I don't think I've got a tap I can rely on. Bit weird. So anyway, I went outside and uh, a lovely old lady, she's 94, called Margaret Noble, came by and we had a chat and she gave me a generous donation. And uh, that was really nice. Greetings campers and others. Well, this is my update for Saturday. I think it's Saturday today. I'm losing track of time a bit. Um, okay, well, I've had a bit of problem with communications over the last couple of days. Couldn't get my phone charged for various reasons. Couldn't get on Wi-Fi. So uh, it's all been a little bit difficult with communications. But anyway, here I am now. So yesterday, okay, the second wheel arch snapped, which was a bit of a, uh, a downer. And I've decided that I'm going to give up on the trailer. It's, I mean, two major disasters. Uh, I just don't think it's worth trying to repair it anymore. So luckily, and one must look on the bright side, um, after it broke, I managed to tape it together with some sticky tape. And there was a camping shop about five or six miles further on. So uh, I've got myself a rucksack and I'm going to carry on now with a, a rucksack and leave the trailer. So, uh, yes, I've had quite a few little problems, but looking on the bright side, a lot worse could have happened. So I'm actually very lucky. Now then, I have a little puzzle for you. We'll have three puzzles for you. First one is, why couldn't the goblin chop the tree down? Second puzzle is, which tree grows best near the sea? And the third puzzle is, why did the farmer go into his field and bury his money under a mound of earth? And I'll give you the answers to those tomorrow. Um, OK, continuing my story about yesterday. Um, it was quite a long day. A lot of it was spent on the A38, which is fairly busy. Um, but quite a few happy beeps and waves and uh, one or two donations um, in the evening I could see the Mendip Hills coming towards me and I thought nah I don't want to go over those tonight so I headed for a pub called the New Inn which is right at the bottom of the Mendips and when I got there it was jam-packed with people having meals so I managed to get a meal but then there was standing room only so I thought well might as well just carry on walking. So I carried on walking till, well, I don't know, about nine o'clock. And uh, very luckily, I uh, knocked on a door, first door, 
and um, the lady said, yes, you can sleep in our lawn, on our lawn. So it was a nice big lawn, nice and flat. So uh, oh, that was okay. Now, because I'm moving to a uh, rucksack, I'm going to try and trim down on the weight. So I think one of the things I'm going to have to ditch is my camp bed, because that weighs a couple of kilos. I've changed that for um, a sponge bedroll, which is much lighter, and uh, I slept on that last night. So it's going to take a day or two to acclimatise to the new sleeping arrangements. Uh, so this morning, yeah, woke up as usual about six o'clock, got going by seven climbed the longest hill in the world to the top of the Mendips and then gradually down. Now then, I've decided to count how many happy beeps and waves I get in the day and to help myself keep track of the numbers, I'm going to use the periodic table. So today was a gallium day. My fourth puzzle for you is, how many happy waves did I get today? Okay, so enough frivolity. Um, what else? Yes, lots and lots of travel on the A38 today. Um, I kept seeing signs saying Bristol so many miles, Bristol so many miles. I began to think that this Bristol place didn't actually exist because I just didn't seem to get there. Anyway, eventually I got there. Uh, got into town, got the problem with my charger sorted out. I hope so anyway. And um, I've had quite a bit of snow today on and off, one or two little blizzardy things, but nothing too bad. And I've kept warm and dry. And now I'm at the house of a friend's daughter and her husband, uh, Lottie and Ben, and their two children. So um having a nice rest, nice and warm and dry. And uh, I'm going to have a rest day tomorrow and try and sort out all my gear for Monday. Okay, I think that's about it. If I think of anything else, I'll pop another one on or write something on Facebook. So thanks again to everybody for following me and uh, keeping my spirits up and uh, speak to you soon. Bye. Hello again. It's uh, Monday. I'm back on the road. I was a bit worried about the snow, but actually it's been fine. The roads are OK. It's a bit cold, but um, yeah, it's all right. I've got the rucksack now, and that's certainly harder on my legs. But it is what it is. I <coughs> also got a bit of a cold. Now then, I had to show you this, because this is just unbelievable. I've stopped at a farm shop come pub for coffee and cake, and I asked for a bit of chocolate fudge cake. And look... This is what I got. That is just insane. I've never seen such a huge piece of cake. I might not finish it. Good morning again. It's nearly half past seven. And I'm on the move on the way to the Gloucester and something or other. I think it's the Gloucester and Sharpness Canal. Hopefully to meet Chris later on in the day. Uh, last night I slept in a... Well, it's what they call a changing room. Um, at the pub last night, before I had my meal, I noticed that there seemed to be a sort of meeting going on. There was a chap greeting people as they came in. So I went over to him and I explained what I was doing and who I was and uh, said I was looking for somewhere to sleep, a bit of lawn or something. So he said, okay, well, it's a Rotary Club meeting. I'll ask them. So we did and about 10 or 15 minutes later, a chap came to me called John and he said, you're very welcome to sleep on our lawn. In fact, we've got a changing room. And you can sleep in there, and there's an ensuite toilet and shower you can use. So that's where I slept, and I had a good night's sleep, quite comfortable. And uh, off we go again. It's a sunny morning, quite cold still, but uh, oh, it's okay. So I'll speak to you later. I just
just wanted to share this with you. I'm walking along the Sharpness to Gloucester Canal and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's a nice sunny day, calm, really peaceful. And also, I forgot to say yesterday in my update, one of the things I've learned doing this walking is that little things matter. Now yesterday when I packed my rucksack I didn't get the balance quite right and it was awkward all day so I've adjusted it this morning and it's much better. So remember that when you're walking, get your rucksack packed properly. Another little snippet to share with you, still walking along the canal and look at this gorgeous hedge, beautifully made. Wow, that is just awesome. I've changed my mind. I think I'll go by boat. And I've even got a crop of uh, something or other there to keep me going. Could be interesting. Well, this is a video mainly for Tom. I know he's going to be really proud of me because I am off-road. I've no idea what this path is called, but it goes from Evesham to Bidford-on-Avon, about seven miles, I hope. That's if I don't go horribly wrong, but uh, so far seems to be all right. It's quite pleasant. Thank you, Tom. Uh, it's me again. Um, I just wanted to say that I am really grateful that these footpaths so far have been really well signposted. Um, I'm using a, a GPS, it's a, for those technically minded and, and obsessive, of course, it's a Garmin Oregon 700 and it's got Ordnance Survey 1 in 50,000 maps on it. So the GPS pinpoints my position really accurately and it makes it ever so easy to follow these tracks. So at the moment I'm wandering across a field and uh, hopefully Bidford-upon-Avon will be reasonably soon, probably in about three miles and I'll stop for some lunch. Yay! This morning I've passed loads of these uh, huge polytunnel constructions. Dozens of them, hundreds of them. And they're massive. The, uh, the weather is still pleasant. This morning when I started off it was quite cold and uh, in some places there were still some quite big collections of snow, mostly in the lee of hills where they uh, Obviously, haven't been getting much sunlight to melt the snow. Just stopped for five minutes at this caravan park. I found in my bag a little bit of billionaire shortbread. I thought I'd finished it all, but there was just a little bit left. I'm actually getting pretty tired of billionaire shortbread, but uh, you know, I'm still a few miles from lunchtime so it was quite nice and I don't usually like drinking plain water but I'll tell you what when you're thirsty and there's nought else a drop of water is lovely and I'm really enjoying this off-road walking compared to the roads it's just lovely no noise no cars zooming past you okay I miss out a bit on the friendly waves and the beeps, but I think I can do without them. For now, anyway. Just coming alongside a lovely weir, surrounded by what look like willows, all dipping down into the water. Look at this magnificent specimen. Gorgeous. And it's, I don't know, there's something very soothing and relaxing about walking along 
outside water and especially the sound. Yeah, it's lovely. Just a little sample of the sort of track I've been following for a while, right on the edge of the river. Apparently this track is Shakespeare's Avon Way and it's lovely. Now if this was Lord of the Rings, I'd be pinned under the water by a willow root or I'd be being chased by black riders. Fortunately it's not. It's 2018 and I'm hoping lunch is going to be soon. Good morning. Well, it's Friday the 23rd, <clears throat> I think. Uh, I make it day 19 of the adventure and I'm in the little village of Snitterfield where I stayed last night. Uh, yesterday was an interesting and mixed day. In the morning, following Tom's advice, I decided to go off-road and very fortunately there was a, a track marked on the map called Shakespeare's Avon Way which I followed all morning and it was absolutely delightful. A lot of it went alongside the River Avon. There were some hilly bits with gorgeous views and uh, at lunchtime I got into the town of... I can't remember. I can't remember what it was called. Bother. Um, but anyway, I had a nice lunch. Afternoon was on road and um, most of it was okay, small country roads like this. There were one or two big, busy roads to get across, but um, ended up at Snitterfield, which was, I think, probably about 23 miles yesterday. And you know how, as you get towards a destination after a long journey and it goes on and on and on, and then eventually you see your destination and you arrive and there's this overwhelming sense of tiredness but also relief and a sense of achievement. Yay! So anyway, stayed at Snitterfield, um, knocked on a couple of doors with no answer and then I knocked on the door of Greg and Roz. Roz was very sensibly a little bit chary about letting the onto their lawn so she asked for my ID. Very good. And then uh, once that was sorted they invited me in. We had tea and uh, chocolate eclair and I uh, got settled. Went off to the pub for the evening and the pub was brilliant. There were so many people interested in what I was doing. I had loads of donations. Nice evening meal. Morning and uh, got to bed about half ten, slept well and here we are off again, just had a little bit of breakfast with Roz and Greg which was really kind. Uh, I've got a little daughter called Tabitha and a lovely dog called Scout. So I'm off. It's about, again about 22-23 miles to Burbage. Toodle pip, speak to you later. Hello again, it's um, Saturday morning and I'm walking through a little village called Stapleton on my way to Breeden on the Hill. Uh, a chap called Michael has just stopped in his lorry and uh, we had a chat, he was interested obviously and, uh, and he's going to contact his local paper and possibly also local radio, Radio Leicester I think he said, and try and get something on. So. Uh, it's not a bad morning, a little bit of light rain, um, and, uh, yeah, otherwise all going well. My feet last night, oh my god, they were so sore, <sighs> but anyway, they're okay today. Speak to you later.
Well, good morning, viewers. I had to share this with you. It's stunning, isn't it? This bridge. I don't know how long it is, but uh, it's beautiful. And it's a gorgeous morning, sunny. I can feel the warmth on my neck. And uh, I'm on my way, sorry about the noise. I'm on my way to Derby, which I think will probably be my first coffee and cake stop. I had a good night's sleep, um, staying with Catherine and Jeff, uh, Olivia and Chloe, who were very kind and gave me a lovely breakfast. So I'm full of vigour and vim, whatever that means. And uh, on my way. Speak to you later. Bye. Well, that's been quite extraordinary. I don't remember ever being across anything like this before. It's like a, a massive, long, wiggly, windy bridge. You can maybe see where that van's going over there, going over, probably over a river, I'll see in a minute. But this <coughs> bridge thing has been going on for about half a mile, maybe more. I don't know if you can see in the distance there, the cars going along. It winds its way across this flat valley, I suppose. Maybe at one time it was marshy, boggy land. And they've built this bridge, which is definitely not designed with pedestrians in mind. Keep stepping off the road onto this tiny little edge bit, and there's cyclists risking their lives. It's a crazy thing. Quite, um, oh, it's a gorgeous bit of architecture, but a little bit scary for getting across. Well, that was lovely. It's uh, 12.48, and um, I was, I'm just walking through part of Derby uh, to get to Ashbourne, and um, I walked past this chap on a bike, and he called over and asked where I was going, so I went over and explained, and then I said, couldn't trouble you for a cup of tea, could I? So, took me in, met his wife, uh, it's Steve and Janie. Steve had been for a long bike ride. So we sat and had a cup of tea and chatted, and I feel refreshed. That was really nice. Well, I thought I'd just show you this rather nice walk I've been doing. It's an old railway line <coughs> from Leek towards Congleton. Doesn't go all the way but quite a few miles and it's just running alongside this lovely reservoir now with gorgeous trees lining it. It's a bit cool, slightly windy but otherwise a very pleasant walk. Better than this morning when it was raining quite hard most of the time. Well, here I am, or well, there's my shadow anyway, walking along just after sunrise on day 25. I reckon that I'm just past the halfway point now. Well, that feels quite good. Had a good night's sleep. It was a bit frosty when I got up, but uh, I'm warming up now fingers are just about back to normal and uh, headed for Wigan today. Well I've got to try and show you this. This is uh, awesome. There's um, a river down there and then this is a toll bridge. Yeah, <laughs> uh, really funny and uh, it's quite busy across here so Everybody's queued up and honestly everybody, well not everybody, but most people are looking so crucial, it's really making me laugh. I mean I'm not laughing at them, but it is quite funny really. Everybody's so serious. Oh well, I suppose it's because they're going to work and I'm not. What a gorgeous river though. Really still. Nice day. Oh well, onwards and upwards. Well, I've got to tell you about this before I forget. 
there's about three things I want to tell you. First thing is, um, a mile or so back, met a chap who's homeless. Said he'd been homeless for about five years, but we chatted, seemed like a nice bloke. He does bits of work here and there. And uh, towards the end of the conversation, he said, hey, I must give you something. He gave me 31p, probably his last 31p for today. Uh, and then in contrast to that, yesterday, last yesterday afternoon as I was walking along through this area, obviously very opulent, walked along one road and there were huge security gates all the way along. House after house, huge security gates. I thought I might uh, ring one of their bells <coughs> and ask if I could sleep in their garden just for a joke. Well, not a joke, but just just to see, you know, how people like that would react. Anyway, I didn't. And I had something else to tell you. Oh yeah, that's right. Now, you might not know this. Tom probably does. Lots of people joke with me and say, oh, you're going land end to John O'Groats. Well, isn't that going uphill? Well, actually, technically, if you ignore all the ups and downs in between, technically it's slightly downhill because the earth is a little bit squashed and it's slightly flatter at the poles. Anyway, that's a bit of nonsense. So, time to carry on. Well, I've got to tell you this, this has really made me smile. Um, a couple of miles back, I was walking through a village and there was a, a bus there, it was a school bus. And there were some kids hanging out the door and shouting at each other and I just walked on. A couple of minutes ago, the bus was stopped waiting for some more kids. And there were these kids, I suppose they're 11, 12, 13, hanging out the door saying, look, he's coming. And then as I got to the bus, they started asking me what I was doing and how long I'd been doing it and how did I eat and all the rest of it. It was really nice. And um, so I told them all about it, um, gave them one of my little information tickets, said, you know, if you want to follow me on Facebook. So uh, off they went, smiling and shouting. Brilliant. And now I've I looked across the road and there was a lady in a window so I went and asked if she'd make me a cup of tea and uh, she's doing that just now. Brilliant. Well it's nearly one o'clock and I could really do with some lunch but here I am alongside a canal which is going to take me up to Wigan. I think it's about four miles. So the temptation was too much. It's just lovely walking along beside the river. So lunch I'll have to wait. Hello, it's Easter Sunday and uh, we're walking along the canal. Hello. Would you like an Easter egg, sir? Oh, hang on a sec. Oh, well, that's nice. That lady stopped me to give me an Easter egg. Uh, well, anyway, we've been on the canal since this morning. That's brother Jeremy, who's walked all the way with me. We're nearly at Gallgate. And I reckon we've done over 15 miles, maybe 16, 17. And uh, I'm headed for, well, lunch in Gallgate, and then Lancaster and hopefully beyond. because it's raining quite hard but I wanted to share it with you anyway um, yeah I've been walking along the A6 Tom sorry it's not been too bad quite windy in places raining most of the time but I'm staying dry a uh, tiny bit into my shoes but pretty good really um, and uh, I'm just coming into the town of Milnthorpe which is about eight miles short of Kendall and uh, a chap pulled up on the side of the road and uh, 
started. Our house is just up the road, about 10 minutes. Come in and have some lunch with us. Wow, fantastic. I got free tea and cake at a cafe a couple of miles back. People stopping and giving donations. It's been amazing, amazing. Good morning, it's uh, Tuesday 3rd of April and I'm on my way again. I'm walking towards Shap and uh, yeah it's the A6. It's not as busy as it was yesterday. Quite a long steady climb this morning. I'm expecting fairly heavy rain a bit later. Uh, I might even be starting now. Uh, but otherwise it's quite pleasant walking this morning. So I'll update you later on. Ah, hello again. Well, uh, thought you wouldn't want to see my mush a second time. <coughs> I've climbed about 1100 feet. So I think I'm pretty much on Shap Fell now. It's raining a bit, quite misty, as you can perhaps see. Um, quite cold as well, there's still a fair bit of snow lying around in patches, but I've not actually had any snow falling yet, thank goodness. And uh, the walk has been okay. The road has been fairly quiet. There's been plenty of verge to walk on like this and uh, quite nice easy walking actually on the verges. A lot of them can, can be rutted by tractor wheels but along this bit it's been pretty good. So I think I'm about three miles from Shap and uh, coffee and cake break or maybe lunch. Okay, see you later. Well, this is perhaps slightly depressing. I thought we were reforesting a lot of these uh, hillside areas but it's a massive area of deforestation there and it's not the first I've seen along the walk. Well I hope it's part of a proper plan. Well here we are, day 31, I think it's Wednesday. Uh, walking along the back roads today to Carlisle, it's a nice track which hardly adds anything to my mileage so that's really good. It's raining, been raining quite steadily more or less since I got up. Had a good night's sleep in the uh, beer garden of the pub. So I'm walking along beside the railway track here and uh, over to the left is the motorway M6. Can't see it, it's just over the brow of the hill. Oh there we are, you can see, a, see lorries there in the distance. Uh, so headed for Carlisle and beyond. Yay! Good morning fellow travellers. Well, I think it's day 31, Wednesday morning. It's bright and sunny as you can see, there's my shadow. So I'm walking north. <laughs> Um, okay, interesting evening. I got to uh, Carlisle and went to the hostel. It had been a pretty tough day, so I was fairly, <clears throat> fairly tired and decided to spoil myself. Uh, nice hostel, lovely and warm. I got um, an Indian meal and met some nice people at the hostel. There was Joseph and his dad, Paul, who are doing uh, cycling, uh, Griffin who is doing a sort of pilgrimage and Tamara from Australia uh, having a walking around holiday. So it was a nice evening, slept well in a dorm room with Joseph and Paul and uh, overslept this morning, didn't get up until about seven. Had some breakfast, got packed and I'm on my way. Yeah then, on the, uh, on the way, oh no, as I was leaving the hostel, the sign that I have on the back of my rucksack, uh, which I'll maybe do a picture of later, broke. One of the little holes that was holding it on broke. So 
on my way out of Carlisle, I came across a craft shop. So I popped in there and had a look, got a bit of balsa wood, and then popped across the road to um, a car repair place. Can't remember which one it was now. And a lovely chap in there called Kevin uh, fixed it up for me, fixed the bits of balsa wood on my sign and uh, I have a new and improved version now, so I'm on my way and uh, should be meeting Laura and her husband later on. So further updates later in the day, little bit. Well, to quote from Harry Potter, I confess myself disappointed. There was no big sign saying this is Scotland, welcome Richard. No, nothing. Just that sign there saying Gretna. Old blacksmith's shop visitor centre. Well, hopefully there's going to be coffee and cake there. Anyway. I'm in Scotland! Hooray! Okay, it's a bit noisy, but hopefully you can hear that. There's Laura over there and Harry waving. And there is the Scotland sign. Hooray! Scotland welcomes me. Yay! Okay, over the road, try and stay alive. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Good morning campers. Well, it'll have to be a fairly quick one today because I'm a bit worried about my batteries. It looks like I'm not going to have anywhere to uh, eat tonight. You know, no pub or place to spend the evening and charge up everything. So I'll just have to be a bit cautious today. It's a nice morning, sunny, a bit cold. It was pretty cold getting out of the tent, but uh, I'm on my way. Had a couple of donations already. The bakery in uh, Lockerbie gave me some coffee and a cake. And uh, a chap in a gas van just pulled up. Nice friendly beep. So anyway, I'll update later on. Ah, hello again. Well, it's uh, just after 11 o'clock. I'm doing reasonably well. Uh, heading for a little place called Biatok, not Buttock, Biatok. And um, I think subconsciously I was hoping that Scotland would be a little bit better in terms of looking after the environment. But just look at this. I think this is possibly the worst I've seen absolutely horrendous. It's by a lay-by of course, which tends to uh, get the worst of the rubbish. Anyway, it's nice and sunny, so I'm hoping to make good progress. Talk to you later. Well, hello again. It's nearly half past three. I've stopped for a small bite to eat and a drink. Oh, Got to tell you, this is tough. Today, particularly, been walking along this stretch of road, which I'll show you a bit of. It's a small road that runs alongside the motorway. It's very quiet and incredibly boring. It looks like the same stretch of road over and over again. The road goes ever on and on. Been climbing, climbed about 400 feet now in the last hour or so. So we're definitely getting up and it's getting Oh, look. There's the railway line. It's like it's teasing me. Trains go past every now and then. And I feel quite envious. Well, I suppose in a couple of weeks' time, maybe I'll be on one of those going home. Hooray! Uh, anyway, um, I've stopped here. There's uh, quite an interesting little bridge. Railway bridge, obviously. Uh, 
Right, okay, so I'm headed for a place called Elvenfoot, which I think is probably about another four or five miles. I'll probably stay around there for the night. I think I'm going to have to rough camp. I'm sure there's no pub or anything like that, so I'm not going to get a meal. Hey, oh, here's traffic. And um, certainly my experience of the last couple of days is that, God dare I say this, I hope nobody's listening, um, Scotland is not as generous as England. Good morning fellow travellers. I'm on my way again. I think it's day 35 and uh, I'm headed towards, uh, well I'm not going to make it to Stirling today, I'm hope, hoping I'll get to Falkirk. I'm doing between 20 and 25 miles a day now so keeping the mileage up. Um, I got to Lanark last night um, stayed in the garden of a lovely couple called Eddie and Pam who gave me breakfast this morning and uh, helped me sort out my route for today. So I'm on my way and I'll speak to you later. Well I had to just stop and show you this. I'm walking along listening to Take That and it's lovely. And then this gorgeous valley opened up. I don't know if you can see that and appreciate how beautiful it is. And I just stopped open mouthed in horror. <laughs> I can't describe to you how horrible this is. Good morning, fellow travellers. Well, here we are, day 37, and I'm just leaving Stirling, walking up through the university section, apparently. Looks like I've got some fairly interesting hills ahead. Uh, I had a lovely rest last night, staying with uh, Anne and Harry slept a little bit longer than I usually do, which was really good. Uh, so I'm on my way now. What else can I tell you to know? Speak to you later. Yes, I know what I was going to tell you. Um, my coping strategies. <laughs> because, well, I am getting pretty tired and I am looking forward to getting to John O'Groats. So my coping strategies include fantasizing about stealing a car and driving home, fantasizing about getting on a train. Oh, it's just so tantalizing when I'm walking along by ra railway tracks and seeing trains going zooming past. So I'm fantasizing about getting on that train in Thurzo. Ah, joy. <laughs> Hello again. Well, I've just stopped for a, a quick snack by the side of the road. It's been a tough one this morning, uh, climbing up out of Stirling with a very long, steep climb. I don't know, maybe five, six hundred feet. I don't know. And then at the top, it was pretty bleak moorland, strong headwind, a little bit of rain, mist and temperature quite low, I think it, there are one or two little patches of snow lying around, so probably not a lot above freezing. I'm coming down now into a little village called Green Loaning, where I hope I might get a cup of tea, but I'm not holding my breath. It's, uh, it's only a small place, I think. Mm. So it's been an interesting walk, quite nice. 
uh, road to walk along, very little traffic, but one or two cars every hour, and I think I've seen three cyclists this morning, so pretty quiet. Hello campers, well I've got to tell you this, I'm in the restaurant at the moment so I'm talking quietly, but I've just been overwhelmed with kindness today. Now it's been quite a tough day as they all are, but towards the end, as I was getting towards my destination which is Creef, um, a lady pulled up in um, a big Land Rover Discovery, out she came, about six children piled out and they were all waiting to chat to me, they asked me what I was doing and so on. And um, the lady asked me where I was going, have I got accommodation for the night? No. Okay, do you want to stay with us? Yes. So I've got a roof over my head tonight, which is wonderful. Um, I'm at a restaurant, so I'd already booked that, so I'm having my dinner here. They're going to come and pick me up and drop me back here in the morning. And then in the restaurant, there was a big family group having a dinner, and then at, just as they were leaving, one of the, well, two or three of them came over and talked to me and uh, gave me a big donation and lots of positive strokes. Really, really nice. Lovely. Good evening, my dears. Well, let me tell you about today. Started off from Stirling. I think I've probably told you some of this already, so I'm sorry if I'm getting repetitive, but you know. Old age does these things. Um, yeah, so starts off from Stirling, big steep climb up onto a big hill, moorland, quite, um, what's the word, uh, barren, windy, misty, bit of rain, cold, so quite hard going. Um, had lunch in a little village about halfway, and then on to... Um, oh yes, a little town called Creef. And on the way, the most wonderful thing happened. Uh, and oh God, age is a very bad thing. Yeah, um, a lovely lady called Carol stopped her car. Uh, well, it's a Land Rover Defender. About six children got out. It was six children, wasn't it, Carol? Five, five children got out um, to say hello to me and we chatted a bit and Carol said, have I got any accommodation for the night? I said, no. So here I am in uh, Carol and Angus's house for a nice comfy night, warm, dry, uh, so lovely, nice end to the day. Tomorrow's probably going to be a bit tough, 25 miles. Good morning fellow travellers. I'm uh, going from Creef to Aberfeldy today and I just wanted to show you this amazing scenery. Uh, I don't know if you can appreciate that. I'm really getting into some mountainous highlands sort of uh, scenery now. And on this side, gorgeous pine forests, really old and all the ground is covered in moss. It's lovely. And the road's not too bad, fairly quiet, not too many steep hills yet. Hello again. Well, just thought I'd show you this. There are still some quite big patches of snow lying around, but this is in between the trees where I suppose it's sheltered. It's been a long, long climb. I don't know, it must have been five or six miles of steady climb. I'm about three miles from Aberfeldy now and hopefully a coffee and cake break. Yay! Oh, and someone's just stopped, a nice chap, pulled up and uh, asked me what I was doing about the charity and that and said there's a, a restaurant in Aberfeldy called Leo's, the Rhino restaurant, 
go in there and have my dinner and he'd pay for it. Brilliant, very generous. Good morning fellow travellers, here we are again on the move, is it day 39? I don't know, losing track, losing my marbles. Anyway, I'm just setting off, I've spent the night with Susanna and Patrick, a lovely couple with two children, living in a really nice old house by the side of the River Tay, and uh, I'm just walking along a river path now which will take me to a village a couple of miles down the road called Gruntley. Uh, sun is shining, still a bit cold but otherwise a lovely morning so I'm headed for Pitlochry and hopefully beyond today. Okay speak to you later, toodle pip. Well I've got to show you this after a couple of miles on the riverbank, I came to a little village called Grantley. It's actually spelled Grand Tully. Um, and the lady there said, are you going up over the top to Pitlochry? What do you mean? I said, she showed me on the map this footpath, <coughs> which I have taken, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that view. Fantastic. And I think it'll certainly save me some mileage and made me a bit of time. Onwards and upwards. Well, I think it's Wednesday afternoon, yep, Wednesday afternoon, walking along a river track uh, to Killycrankey. It's a beautiful little valley, river valley here, with a little rocky island. Ever so peaceful, nice and warm, and over there there's a, a narrow rocky inlet for the river. And then along here it's an amazing viaduct. Gorgeous. Good morning again, fellow travellers. Well, I'm on the way to Dalwinnie. I'm following this, uh, looks like a little road. It's actually a cycle path. There's a little herd of lovely white horses or ponies there. Uh, a bit further over there, you can't really see, and I'm not going to close up them, go and close up for you because uh, I think there's a dead horse. Two standing next to it, and uh, dead one just lying motionless on the ground. Um, a little van over there, derelict house here. And then this is just very curious. I stopped here for a five minute break. And I'll try and show you inside this derelict building. There's straw and uh, pallets all over the floor. And uh, same in the next room. Very strange. Presumably a, a derelict toilet. And here we are again. So. Hello again, <coughs> travellers. I just wanted to show you this. I've been walking for about three hours or so and uh, just come up to this gorgeous valley with a loch in the distance. See I'm picking up the uh, Scottish lingo, loch, pretty impressive isn't it? And still lots of snow on the hilltops and that's where I'm he headed. <clears throat> I think I've got about 10 miles to go, but I daren't look at my GPS because I'm afraid it might say 11.
Good evening campers. Well, I've got to tell you about this one because this is probably my most interesting evening meal. I'm sat alongside the cycle path um, about six miles from six, seven miles from Dalwini. I've probably done 26 or 27 miles today. Not feeling fine. But uh, nowhere to stop for dinner, I don't think. So I was very kindly given some scones and jam and butter by the Dalwini Cafe. Bless them all. And this is my tea, a scone with a jar of jam. Now, I haven't got a knife or a spoon, so I'm having to dig the jam out with my finger and put it on the scone. Um, but anyway, it's very welcome. I've got a uh, bottle of water there instead of a cup of tea. I'd love to have a cup of tea, but I don't think I'm going to tonight. So probably a bit of uh, wild camping. Toodle pip. Good morning fellow travellers and that's not a joke I do feel as though you're my fellow travellers even though you're not actually walking it with me your support has been amazing and I am very grateful to you all for that so this is day 41 I think I think it's probably a Saturday somewhere in April no, I'm kidding. I know what day it is. It's uh, is it 2015 somewhere. Anyway, here we are walking along a lovely cycle track. I don't know if you can see there that gorgeous bird with the white wings. I'm not sure what it is. I have a feeling it might be an Arctic tern. Apparently they do come around here and uh, I've seen quite a lot of oyster catchers as well. And lots of other birds I don't, uh, I can't name. In the distance you can probably make out the mountains of the Cairngorms. It's a very nice morning. The air's a little bit cool, but it's absolutely gorgeous for walking. And I'll tell you what, up here in Scotland, they certainly know how to do a proper cycle track. This is a cycle and walking track. And there's the road. And it's been like this for, oh, I don't know, several days. So really beautiful and a lovely way to start the day. So I'm headed for uh, Aviemore. Should get there after lunch and then head on towards Inverness. I'm going to get to Inverness, I'm pretty confident, tomorrow where I've got somewhere to stay. Hurrah! So, lovely day. Speak to you later. Uh, 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 hello again. Okay, I just wanted to show you this by way of sort of explanation. I'm walking along the A9, there's no cycle track on this bit, so there's not much alternative. There, there is a little B road that runs alongside, but honestly it's as dangerous walking along there as along here. Now look, I expect a lot of drivers think when I'm walking along the hard shoulder, why the hell doesn't he walk on the verge? And this is why, because it's so bloody uneven. It's really uncomfortable. Yes, I know it's uh, a bit of a pain being so close to the traffic, but you see how much steadier this is. It is so much easier walking along the hard shoulder, so I'm afraid I'm just going to have to grin and bear it. I've got to show you this. It was the a9 almost completely empty and uh, by the way I was wrong about the cycle track there is one so I'll be getting on to that in a minute well I've had a small disaster yeah about a quarter of an hour or so I stopped to have a rest and something to eat sat down on a log I put my waterproof trousers 
down on the log for somewhere dry to sit. Had my lunch, got packed up, got up and walked on. After about a half a mile, I don't know what made me think about it, but I thought, have I packed my waterproof trousers? Looked in my rucksack, and no, they weren't there. So I hastily tucked my rucksack away off the, uh, off the main carriageway and half ran, half walked back. Luckily, I found my waterproof trousers. I'm on my way back now. I'm just hoping and praying that no one's found my rucksack and thought, oh, this is a nice little find. So we'll see in a minute. I'm nearly back to where I left my rucksack. God, I hope it's here. Oh, thank the Lord. There it is. Oh, God. That was scary. Good morning fellow travellers. Well as you can see I think it's a lovely sunny morning up here in Highlands of Scotland. I'm uh, no. I'm heading for Inverness today. It's about 25 miles so hopefully you should get there early evening. Got somewhere to stay which is nice. Uh, what else can I tell you? Had a good night's sleep last night. <coughs> I was given a bed for free in the hotel there, which was brilliant. And uh, I'm on my way. Well, I just stopped here at this hostel. They do adventures, cycling and stuff. And uh, I asked if I could have a cup of tea and bless them. They gave me a nice cup of tea which was a very nice break. Proper doer Scotsman he was, lovely. So I'm off again. Hello again, fellow travelers and adventurers. Well, some of you may recognize this, uh, this place. Can you see in the distance the water and the other shore? Well, that's the Moray Firth. And the other shore, somewhere along there, is where I'm going to be walking over the next few days. Towards the end! Greetings once again. Well, I'm on what's called the Keswick Bridge, which is the bridge across the Cromarty Firth, and it's quite stunning the view from here. Absolutely amazing, you can see all around. Really beautiful. Morning. So this marks a fairly important point, I think, crossing over into the, uh, the northern reaches of Scotland. And uh, I reckon just four days to go. Well, this could be interesting. I'm just approaching Cromarty Bridge across the Cromarty Firth. Very pretty. And apparently there are major roadworks going on here and they're taking car vehicles across in convoy. So I'm not sure what they're going to do with me. Let's see. Well, that was okay. A very nice man walked me across the tricky bit. It really is lovely here. Gorgeous walking across the water. Look at that. It's lovely.
Hello again, my, <clears throat> my fellow travellers. Well, this video looks very boring. You can see my feet and the road, and that's really how I feel about this bloody A9. It goes on and on and on. Ah, it is boring and tiring and quite demoralising in a way. Still, I'm heading for Brora today. I think I've got another 16 miles to do. I'm going to stop off at Golspe in about nine miles to have something to eat. A little while back, a couple of miles back, I was really feeling tired and I was low on water. So I knocked on a door. There was nobody in that one. Knocked on the next one. Well, actually, I didn't knock on the door because the old chap was, uh, it's called Ian, and he was in his front garden practicing his golf strokes. Whoa, big lorry. Very little space on this road, look. A little tiny verge. And still quite a busy road. Anyway, Ian invited me in, gave me tea, I had two lovely cups of tea, cake, biscuits, and a nice long chat. And I felt really rested after that, so I wouldn't say I'm walking with a spring in my step, but I certainly feel better than I did. Nine to go to Golfsby. Toodle pip. Good morning, my dears, my fellow travellers. Well, here we are. Nice, quiet A9 for a change. It's uh, just after 7.30. I've been going for about half an hour or so. The sea is there. And it's lovely walking alongside the sea. That's where I'm headed. Last night I stayed in what's called a shepherd's hut. It was quite quaint, a bit expensive for what it was really, but uh, there you go. Um, nice and warm, and I'm headed for a little town called Helmsdale today, Wick tomorrow. And, well, you know what comes after that. I'm f definitely feeling lighter in spirit today. Yesterday was pretty tough, 29 miles. That was hard going. But today feels a lot better. Feels like I'm really, really on the home straight. Well, here we are, day 20, 20, day 46, and uh, back on the A9. Busy again. There's the sea. And that's my road ahead. Google Earth tells me I've got 20 miles to go to Wick. and that it'll take me six hours. That's probably a little bit optimistic, but I think the road's gonna be fairly flat from now on. Had a good sleep last night in a campsite. First campsite of the trip. So this is really my last full day of walking. Tomorrow will be a shorter day. And the end. I meant to say in the previous one, it's a lovely morning. It's really still. There's a little bit of cloud cover, look. But not much. Well, a bit of cloud cover. So it'll be a 
a sunny shady day. Yesterday I had some mega hills to go up and down. At the bottom of one there was quite a nice tea room or coffee room. It just feels nice today. Mm. Lots of daffodils. Some lovely little uh, houses here. What do you call them? Bungalow thingies. Well, that was lovely. I've just got to near the top of this hill, a little place called Latheron, and uh, there was a B&B. &B. So I thought, shall I go and knock on the door and ask if, if I can have some breakfast? So as I was walking towards the door, the lady, the owner of the B&B, &B, was uh, getting out of her car. So I said, is this yours? He said, yeah. So I said, could I buy some breakfast from you? And uh, she was a bit uncertain, but I said, I only want some toast and a bit of coffee. And bless her, she took me in, <coughs> gave me toast and coffee. And then, God bless her, she actually made a pack up for me with bacon sandwiches. Oh! Obviously, I couldn't take them because I'm vegetarian, but there were two other guys there who were doing proper B&B. So they took the bacon sandwiches. But that's just lovely, isn't it? Just underlines that people mostly just want to be kind. Lovely. There are three types of motorists broadly up here. There's the considerate, the indifferent, and the bloody minded. The considerate at best, when they see you, they slow down, they move out. They indicate, uh, they may wave, give a friendly toot. They're really good. The indifferent don't really seem to care. They don't seem to notice that you're there. Don't move out, don't slow down. So they can be a little bit scary. And the third group, the bloody minded, well, no knowing what's going on in their minds. Well, here we are, it's uh, 12.39. I've been going just over five and a half hours before the show breaks. And I think I can see Mick in the distance. Does that help? I'm not sure, really. It's so tantalizingly far away, but I suppose seeing it on balance helps a little. Uh, how else do I go with this? Because it's really hard just keeping going on and on and on. And you get over the brow of a hill wondering if maybe something nice is going to be the other side, like a cafe, and it's just another hill, another bit of the road. Oh, God. So, well, I talked to the sheep. Um, they don't often say very much back. There's loads of lambs, which are really cute. Oh, they're so cute. So it's quite fun talking to them. I do sums in my head, which takes a bit of time. So, uh, for example, I've got, say, 30 miles left to do. What percentage is that of the 950 or so? out of the total walk. So that takes a bit of concentration and time. I listen to music, I listen to my e-books, and I chat to you a lot, which is nice. Here comes a bus. I'll have to jump off the road in a minute because they don't take prisoners, these buggers. Well, good morning. For the last time, my fellow travellers. Just after seven o'clock on Friday, 
day 47. You couldn't ask for a more perfect morning. It's absolutely gorgeous. The sky is almost completely clear. Ah, look at that. Beautiful morning. Garden there absolutely full of daffodils. Looks gorgeous. So for you, I think I've got about five miles to go to uh, John O'Groats and then there's just under two miles to the actual sea, which I think I'll do. Might even dip a finger in the water. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this really, but um, we're looking now at the Shetlands and Orkneys out there. It's a beautiful sight on this lovely sunny morning. I think I'm about a mile from John O'Groats now. Just round there to the right. Well, um, okay, nearly there. There's the islands. Lots of houses dotted around and I think this is John O'Groats and in the distance right on the top there you can probably see a little thing sticking up I think that's Duncansby Lighthouse Tom, this is for you. I'm walking off road, look, and towards Duncansby, uh, what's it called? Lighthouse at Duncansby Head. The end, the end of the road. Hooray! Okay, my friends, this is it. This is. Yeah. I'm at Duncansby Head. There's the lighthouse. Uh, Orkneys and Shetlands out there. Really, really beautiful. And there's John O'Groats back there. And here I am. Well, what an adventure it's been. 47 days, there have been some highs, some lows, there's been some difficult times. And some really good times. Sorry. Have a look at the sea while I get gather myself. So this is this is for you. Bugger. Bugger. You've been with me on this journey. And what a journey it's been. So, thank you. Thank you. Ah, well, that was lovely. I was um, up on Duncan's Bee Head, and um, oops, because uh, my feet are really sore now, and I'm quite tired. And there was a young couple there. They'd been up to the head and were just having a little walk around, getting in their car. So I just called to the uh, to the young man and said, "Can you please give me a lift to John O'Groats?" 
I think they were a little bit hesitant at first, but they gave me a lift. Lovely couple uh, students called Julian and Ava. So I'm back at the hotel now. I'm going to have another cup of lovely coffee. And then think about getting to uh, Thurzau. <laughs>